Hello, my name is Todd Stillwell, and I'd like to show you how you can create your own SM drum key maps and contacts. Originally, when the idea for having different key maps and contact came up, my first thought was to simply have three or four presets with different key maps that could be easily loaded. But it didn't take long to realize that that just wouldn't cut it. So that's when I decided to add the feature for creating your own key maps. Basically, there are three ways to change the keys for each drum and cymbal. You can play the note in real time. You can type in the MIDI note number, or you can type in the actual MIDI note. To explain this in a little more detail, you can see here at the bottom of the kick drum a button that says Set MIDI. When you click on it, it turns yellow and says Play Note. What that means is you can play a note from anywhere that will generate a MIDI note in real time. For example, your outboard MIDI keyboard, a sequencer or a MIDI editor, the pads on an e-drum kit, or even the contact virtual keyboard itself. Now, you may have noticed that the uh, Set MIDI button is turned off. The reason for this is that once you've turned the switch on, you have approximately 13 seconds to select a note. This is just a precaution so that uh, a set MIDI button is not inadvertently left on, which could mess things up. So I'll click on the kick button again, and I'll use the contact keyboard to assign it. Let's see, I'll take it down to a G0. Then above the set MIDI button, we have the MIDI note number. Here you can type in the MIDI note number that will set the note for that particular kit piece. And in this case, I'll type in 33 to take the kick up to an A0. Then above the note number, we have the MIDI note itself, where you can type in the actual note anywhere from a C-2 to a G8. So now, let's see, I'll take the kick up to a B0. Also, you may have noticed that when I hoover over the note number or the note name, a little up and down arrow appears. You can use those arrows to move the key up or down a half step. And that brings me to another important thing. Two notes cannot occupy the same key. So when I try to move the kick up one key, you can see that the note will not move and a message comes up saying this key is already selected. So no two notes can be set to the same key. Okay, that's the uh, three basic ways you can manually set the keys. And there is a fourth way to set up your key maps, but I'll get into that later. Now, before we go any further, I would like to point out an important aspect about contact. Right now, I'm in the single instrument view that basically shows the full kit along with the keyboard. However, there is an important uh, tool that is not available in this mode but it is in the rack view. So let's go to the rack view, and the first thing I'll do is bring up the bottom to get the uh, virtual keys closer to the key map. So now onto the tool. Up in the main menu, you can see this info icon. When I click on it, another panel shows up at the bottom that has a circled eye. This is basically a panel that gives you information when you hoover the mouse over certain things in contact. So what I did was set the keyboard up so that uh, when you hoover over the keys, the info panel displays both the note number and the actual note. This can be a big help in selecting the keys for your key map. So now let's take a look at the menu. The first menu selection is Restore Default. As the name suggests, this will restore the SM Drum's default key map. The next two selections are for loading presets, one and two. And as you can see, down here in the bottom, we have the two save presets. As their name suggests, these are for saving and loading your own presets. So going back up, our uh, next selection is Use Sequencer. This is the fourth way to enter the notes for your key map that I mentioned earlier. Basically, you can program a sequence of 30 notes. And when you play the sequence, it will create the key maps. 
Then below that, we have resume sequence. This works somewhat like use sequencer, but instead of entering the notes from playing a sequence, you enter the notes sequentially by adding a note from either your MIDI keyboard or contact virtual keys. We'll get into these two selections later. Next in the menu is clear all keys. And as it suggests, it simply clears all the keys so you can get a fresh start. This is for creating your key map from scratch, because now you're free to place the uh, kit pieces anywhere you like, from your MIDI controller or the contact virtual keys. Then finally, we have the reset key map. Occasionally, things can get a little messed up, like the keys not showing their colors appropriately. Selecting reset key map can usually fix these things. So let's get into how all this works. To keep it simple, I'm going to just deal with a few notes and take them all down an octave. But the first thing I'm going to do is set the keyboard up so that it's in a better position for changing the notes. Since the kick is going to go to a C0 and it's the lowest note, I'm going to set the keyboard up so that C0 is on the bottom of the keys. And you can see as I hoover over the lowest key, it's actually a C-2 right now. So I have to move the keys up two octaves. And now I have C0 on the bottom. So now, starting with the kick, I'm going to click on the Set MIDI button and then go down to the keyboard. Since I know that the C0 key is on the bottom, I simply click on it, and now the kick is reassigned. And to verify it, I can just click on the key a few times. Now I'm going to do the same with the side stick. Click on the set MIDI and we'll take it to a C sharp zero. Then with the snare hybrid, I'm going to take it down to a D zero. However, this time instead of using set MIDI, I'll just type in the note number. Then I'll do the same with the rim shot. Now with the snare hybrid two, I'm going to type the actual note in and take it to an E zero. And same with the snare hybrid one, and I'll put it on an F0. Okay, that's the three basic ways for setting up your key map from the uh, GUI. So now let's go back to the menu. And the first thing I'm going to do is restore the default. Notice a white button shows up asking, are you sure? And a couple of buttons below where you can choose yes or no. If I select no, nothing will happen. But if I select yes, the default will be restored. Okay, now let's get into the fourth way to program your key map with Use Sequencer. But first I'll open up the MIDI editor where you can see I've already got a sequence programmed. This sequence is programmed to make it somewhat of a uh, general MIDI key map. It's not exact because GM doesn't have some of the SM drum kit pieces. Okay, let me zoom in here real close to show you uh, some important factors about setting this all up. As you can see, the grid is set to eighth note straight, and each note is positioned exactly on the eighth note. Now I'll change the grid to sixteenths, and as you can see, each note is just slightly less than a full 16th note long. These are two important factors for using a sequencer, and you can find more info on this in the Keymap User's Guide. So now let's see how all this works. I'll open up the menu and select Use Sequencer. When I select it, the message Are You Sure comes up, so I'll just click Yes. And as you can see, it clears all the keys and a white button comes up saying, click to stop. That's so that if you stop the sequence before all 30 notes are played, you'll have the option to restore the keys to where they were before they were cleared. So let's do this again. Use sequencer. Yes, and this time I'm going to play the sequence. As you can see, with a BPM of 260, it goes very quickly. And if I play the sequence again, all the keys will play. So now let's save this as uh, preset one. 
And to better prepare myself for what comes next, I'm going to restore the default. So now on to uh, resume sequence. And although it's similar to use sequencer, Resume Sequence is designed to enter the notes in manually from your MIDI controller or even the uh, contact virtual keys. And like you, Sequencer, Resume Sequence also has a counter that will increment upward as you play in the notes. The most important distinction is that the user has complete control over the sequence counter. So let's say, for example, I want to eliminate Snare Hybrid 2 and then move the snare hybrid one and toms all down. First, I'm going to click on this little orange LED, which, like the user guide says, will zero the counter. Now, since I want to eliminate snare hybrid two, I'll uh, alt click on it to clear it, and then set the sequence count to five, which will select the snare hybrid one. Now, since I want to move the snare hybrid one down to E1, I'll uh, simply click on E1 of the virtual keys, and as I do, the uh, sequence count will increment up one. So now I want to bring all the toms down, and I can quickly do that by clicking on the corresponding white key below each tom. Well, that should give you a pretty good idea how resume sequence works. But let's say you want to start from scratch. First, we need to clear the key map. And then open Resume Sequence again. So now with the sequence count at zero, we can start programming the key map with the kick. And if you know exactly how you want your key map, you should be able to do this fairly quickly. I'll just program a few keys here. Well, that's pretty much it. Uh, be sure and examine the Keymap user guide for some of the finer details. And uh, happy drumming, my friends.